I am uh, I'm Rockbot on the interwebs, so follow me, whatever. Uh, I work at NPM. Uh, NPM started out as, as open source, but it's a company now. And I was actually employee number one. And uh, as employee number one, I was a web engineer, and then I moved up to being a tech lead uh, in the web team, and now I'm the engineering manager for the web team. And uh, today, what I'd like to do is kind of take you through NPM, kind of like to start over, but let's, let's just kind of play with NPM a bit today. But before I do that, the first thing I want to do is kind of talk a little bit about NPM. NPM is a package manager for JavaScript. A lot of people think NPM means node package manager. Uh, it turns out it doesn't mean that. It's just three random letters that someone put together. Uh, it, you could say that it has no prescribed meaning. OK. Uh, <laughs> uh, but here's the other funny thing. JavaScript's a bit of a, a misnomer as well, because there's CSS in our repository, uh, or in the registry, there's Go, there's Rust, there's C++. So in reality, NPM is just a package manager. But I like to think it's pretty cool. And our number one priority at NPM is to reduce friction. You all have an important job to do. You want to write code, push to production, make cool stuff. The last thing you want is to have your tools get in the way. So everything we do, every product we build, every service we create, the major takeaway for us is, is this going to make your lives easier? So with all of that in mind, let's build an app. Our app is going to be a random wombat fact generator. And it's going to be a command line client because we don't have a lot of time and I just kind of want to get moving, whatever. Uh, now, this is a wombat. It's a marsupial native to uh, Australia, and you're probably wondering why wombats, that seems ridiculous. Well, it turns out if you take the NPM logo and you flip it around, it no longer says NPM, it says WDU, which obviously, not obviously, really means Wombat Developer Union, and all of the people at NPM, we refer to ourselves as wombats, and this is our little mascot. And if you want to know why we're the Wombat Developer Union and why we chose a wombat in the first place, come find me afterwards. I have a bunch of stickers. We can talk about wombats and NPM and all that good stuff. OK, so I'm going to start talking really, 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 really fast. Uh, the good news is this is being recorded, so you can go onto YouTube later and you can go ahead and put it down to a, one point, or a 0.5x so that you're, I'm not talking that fast. But we have a lot of stuff to cover, so great. OK, the first thing that we're going to do in building this app, we are going to install Node.js if you haven't already. Uh, I personally prefer to go to nodejs.org to, to, and press the big green button. It's easy. It's fast. You can use Homebrew or whatever else you want. I just prefer to go straight to the, to the source. Now, NPM comes bundled with Node, but NPM's release process is at a different rate than Node's release process. And we're going to hear all about Node's release process later from Miles. Uh, but suffice it to say that most of the time, when you're installing Node, you probably have a slightly out of date NPM. In fact, if it's been a few weeks since you updated NPM, go ahead and, and update it again. So you want to go NPM, I, NPM at latest dash G. Fantastic. OK, now let's get to building this app. Are we ready? We're going to do this live. OK. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. OK. So, here we are, we're in our nice little terminal, fantastic. And the first thing I want to point out is that any time you have questions or whatever, from right within your terminal, you can ask, ask for help. And it's really nice and easy. You can just kind of be like, all right, well, what do I do? How does this work? Fantastic. OK, moving on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a directory of random Wombat facts. This is going to be our application. And if you're looking at this and going, what kind of syntax is that? That's not bash. It's because it's fish shell. I like it. I'm not going to have a shell war with you. Whatever. OK. <laughs> so we're creating an application. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do npm init. Now, npm init is an automated tool to create a package.json. Your package.json is essentially a manifest file for your entire app. It's where the computer is basically going to say, OK, what dependencies do you have? What is the name of your app? What version is it on? What's the description? All of those good things. Now, you could, of course, totally make it by yourself. But why would you do that? I'm a lazy de developer. I don't know if you're lazy developers, but I'm totally a lazy developer. And if I can, I totally want my computer to do all the work for me. So 
here we are in this automated tool. And anything that's in parentheses is kind of a default. And so I'm like, OK, you know what? Name, random wombat facts, that sounds great. Version 1.0.0, fantastic. Description, random wombat fact generator, fantastic. Entry point, we're going to have some file called index.js. That sounds good. We won't have any tests, just ignore that. Uh, and uh, no git repo. Whatever, it's fine. We're doing it live. Uh, and so wombats, facts, JSConf. Fantastic. So some keywords that will be useful for searches later. And then you need to add a license. Now, ISC is a pretty standard open source license. But in the event that you don't want to license something, you know what? You don't have to license it. You can just say unlicensed. Is this OK? Yes, sounds great. So now all we have in here is just a simple package.json. And that's what it looks like. And this is what's going to be stored in the registry. And this is what the website uses to kind of show off what version you're on and all that good stuff. OK. So we know that our entry point is index.js. So we're going to go ahead and build that. So let's do an index.js. And we're going to, am I going too fast? Fantastic. Good. OK. <laughs> So we're going to create a really, really, really basic little array called facts. And we're just going to do, 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 do. And this is going to be the easiest little Node.js script you've ever seen. We're just going to console log this fact. And cool. And now we're going to do it node index.js. And boom, that's our fact one. OK, beautiful. We don't have to applause yet. Applause later. Love applause. <laughs> All of you want to applause. I'll take the applause. OK. <laughs> All right, so this was great. Uh, but what do we really want to do? We want something to randomly grab one item from that array, right? Now, of course, we could totally just go ahead and say uh, math.random, math.floor, some algorithm, meh. You know what? Someone has probably already written this because it is the most commonly used code for any randomizer. So let's just see if maybe a package like that already exists. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to npmjs.com, and we're going to open up the search. And I know what you're thinking. You're going to say, Raquel, NPM search is terrible. Not anymore. <clears throat> All right, so what do we see here? We just, kind of, we just put in a little search for random array. And hey, would you look at that? Get a random item from an array. That's exactly what we're looking for. Thank you, Sindrosaurus. OK, so we're going to take a look at that package page. And sounds cool. So in order to install it, we do an npm install dash dash save random item. And then we're going to, we have an API for using it. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say npm install random item dash dash save. Beautiful, fantastic. And the reason why we do dash dash save is because, again, we want that package.json manifest to kind of have all of our dependencies listed in there. And uh, we, could do it autom we could do it ourselves, but I'm a lazy developer. And I hope you're a lazy developer too. So why do it ourselves when the, when the you know, program can do it for us? Plus, it tells you it goes ahead and, and saves the exact version that you're using all the names, and so you don't have to worry about typos or anything. So if we wanted to take a look at the package.json, you can see right here we have our random item dependency. Beautiful. OK. Now, this is less of an NPM thing and more of a node practice thing. I don't always believe everything I read on the internet. So I'm going to do a little trust but verify type thing. So in case you're not aware, node has a read eval print loop, also known as the REPL, where you can kind of sandbox with uh, packages that you've installed. And so as long as you've already installed it into the current directory, you just have to do node, and then you can kind of play with, a, uh, you can play with the, the packages that you've just pulled in. And do, 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 do. And you can kind of just do, OK, so according to the readme, the API is just rando of array, and it should just pull. OK, cool. So this works exactly as I expect. It's pulling random ones. Fantastic. So now I'm going to go ahead and update my index.js to have this random item, require random item, and update this to have random item. 
And now if I do node index.js, all right, fact two, fact two, fact one. All right, cool. So it's doing exactly what we were asking for. Beautiful. OK. So that worked exactly the way we wanted. And now I'm going to, so OK, again, really lazy. I'm such a lazy programmer. I really don't like writing node index.js over and over and over again. And what I'm about to do is going to make it go, you didn't actually make it better. But I want you to think about your own applications, where you're kind of like, when you're starting up your app, maybe it's not just a single point of entry, right? Maybe you have a gulp script that you want to run before you start your app up. Maybe you have a test suite that you want to run before you start your app up. Well, we're going to create an NPM start script. And the way that we do that is we go into our package.json, and we create a new script called start. And there are a few scripts that have special keywords, like start and test, uh, that you can just use npm start, and, and I'll show you that in a second. But you can just do basically index node index.js. And now if I do npm start, it'll run the exact same thing. And so it's just a little bit of an easier thing. Like, I can set whatever it is I want. You can, you can also change that to be a bash script if you really wanted it to, but or you can just have it. You can put uh, just bash straight into, that, uh, into your package.json. So that's pretty cool. But I don't know if you noticed, my, uh, my code's a little wonky. I've got some semicolons some places and some semicolons not in other places, um, or, you know, missing. So what's one thing that I could do to kind of clean up my code? Well, I can use a package like standard to go ahead and, and clean this up. Because, you know, what am I doing here? Again, I don't want to have to think about this. I want to have other, other modules take care of this for me. So I'm going to go ahead and npm install standard. And uh, again, I'm lazy. You don't have to use npm install. You can just do npm i. Uh, and I'm going to do a dash dash save hyphen dev. I can also change this to just dash d with a capital D. Uh, now, so here's the thing about standard and actually any module. Usually you would kind of install it globally with a dash g, kind of like we did with uh, npm. But it turns out you don't ever, I mean ever, have to install a module globally. So especially if you have uh, an application that you're working on and other people on your team are also working on the exact same thing, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, shoot, I completely forgot to tell you you have to install this one thing globally. You don't have to do that ever, ever, ever again. Just install it as a, de a dev dependency because your, uh, the whole point of dev dependencies versus regular dependencies is that your dev dependencies don't need to go into production. They have nothing to do with your actual code. It's just kind of side stuff. So OK, so you have your dev dependency in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, run script. And, doo -doo -doo -doo, and I'm going to call it standardize. And all I'm going to do is just run standard. And what that's going to do for me is I can do npm run standardize. And because standard is, a, uh, is not a, a reserved word, so like start or test, you have to use the word run there. You can't just say npm standardize. You do npm run standardize. And so there were a whole bunch of errors. Oh my gosh, why? Well, it's because standard had a bunch of errors. And it said, hey, look, you, uh, you had extra semicolons. And that was really gross, because standard apparently doesn't like semicolons. Whatever standard, fine, compromise. You're doing a job that I want to do. So uh, the recommended fix is to standard dash dash fix. Now, a lot of people kind of would say, oh, well, I guess I'll have to create a brand new start, startup script or NPM run script so that I can have a dash dash fix in there. But fun fact, you could just as easily NPM run standardize. And if you add a dash dash right after your run script, you can add parameters that you would normally add to your command line. And so I basically just ran dash dash fix on the npm run standardize. And you can see what essentially happened is it ran standard dash dash fix for me. So that's pretty cool, too. OK, so from there, we're doing on time. OK, we're good. OK, so now I want to build another module. I want to build a module of wombat facts, right? Uh, now, the difference between a package and a module is that a package is something that you would, uh, that you can kind of install with NPM, but a module is something that you can actually use with uh, Node's module loader. So you'd use the require syntax. Um, and so not all packages are modules, but all modules are packages-ish. Um, 
But yeah, so we're, what we're going to do is I like to modulize my code. I like to break it up into different pieces. And I like to think about, well, what kinds of modules would other people want to use? I have no idea what kind of things people would want with what random wombat packs. But that's cool. We're going to go ahead and build that anyway. So let's go and create a brand new directory called wombat facts. And we're going to go into that directory. Now, creating a, a module is the exact same process as creating an application. We're going to do an npm init. Now, here's the thing about npm init. If I'm totally cool with all of the little uh, automated bits and pieces, I can just say npm init dash dash yes. And it'll take care of it for me. You can also do just a regular dash y. And so, no, it doesn't have the description or the keywords, but you know what? I'm lazy, and that happened really fast. I didn't have to press enter like a whole bunch of times. So that's pretty nice. And now I'm going to go again into index.js. But because I'm creating a module, I need to do module.exports. And I'm going to create this fact one, and fact two, and fact three, and that's all fantastic. And so that's cool. And what I think a lot of people would do right now is they would kind of publish with some sort of alpha thing or whatever to try to test it on their other application. You don't have to do that. Thing is, I don't want anybody to accidentally download this right now. I just want to detect to see if it works in my regular application. So what I'm going to use is a thing called npm link. And what npm link does is it creates a sim link between uh, your, your working directory and a, a, a directory in user local lib node modules. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back to my random wombat facts application, and I'm going to do npm link wombat facts. And what that does is it creates another sim link from that user local lib uh, node modules and puts it straight into my node modules. Now, for, if you were wondering, node modules is where all of your packages live. Um, and so, so that's pretty neat. And now if I were to, now it's kind of like I just installed it, even though I didn't really install it because I didn't really publish it. Now I can go into my index.js, and I can change these facts here to require wombat facts. And if all goes well, I can just do npm start, and I should still get fact one, fact three, whatever. But if you're a little bit like, OK, wait, but it said fact one, fact two, fact three before, that's cool. Let's go ahead and update our index.js with some real wombat facts. And do, 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 do. So here's some real wombat facts. And note, I haven't done anything. I don't need to npm link again. I don't need to do, I don't need to publish or anything. And I'm just going to go ahead. I just changed directories back into my random wombat facts app. And I'm going to npm start. And turns out uh, they have a backwards facing pouch. Like other marsupials, wombats give birth to a tiny underdeveloped baby that crawls into its mother's pouch to grow and develop further. But wombats pouches have a special difference. They are positioned backwards, opening toward the mother's rear rather than their head. Uh, this allows her to dig without getting dirt in her pouch. That's a pretty cool little fact. Uh, also, wombats have slow metabolisms. It takes a wombat up to 14 days to digest a meal. This slow metabolism helps them out in their hot and dry habitat. So very cool. I think it's pretty cool. OK. <laughs> All right, so now I'm ready to go ahead and publish this module. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to npm unlink, so it, kills, it, it takes out that, uh, that sim link. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and publish it. Now, uh, keep in mind that in order to publish, you need to have an account on npm. You can either uh, npm, you can npm login, and I think you can do an npm sign up. I think it might be an npm sign up. So you can do that on the CLI, or you can just go to the website and create an account there. Or if you already have an account, then just make sure you npm log in for sure. Uh, now, I'm a little wary about creating a Wombat Facts like, high level module, maybe because somebody else already took the name, or I'm just not sure I'm ready to do, have that kind of commitment to the public. Uh, so what I could do is I can scope this module. And what that means is I can put it under my username scope. Usually, we think about scopes as an organization scope, which you have to pay for, your, your company has to pay for uh, orgs, uh, or a, a private scope like a solo account, where you can basically create private modules. But guess what? You can totally create public scoped modules, too. And the way that we do that is we go into our package.json. I'm going to change this to at rockbot slash wombatfacts. 
Um, and if you're ever curious about if you're logged in or not, if you just do npm who am I, it'll tell you who you're logged in as. So good, good trick. Uh, and so now I can do npm publish with a dash dash access equals public. So with, you, with that, that allows you to create a public scoped module. And this should work. So now I've published it, and I can go ahead and take a look at this. If you're wondering about this thing, it's, uh, I'm using Alfred, uh, bad facts. And lo and behold, here we go. I've published it, and it's a version 1.0.0, and that's fantastic. Woohoo! Um, oh no, no README found. What do we do? Uh, let's go ahead and create a README. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we're just going to kind of do a really quick uh, README. And now, when you create a README, it's not really a, a major change to your module. Instead, it's just kind of like a little thing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump my patch version. I'm going to bump my version to bump the patch. And so you can actually use npm version patch. And um, so you can do patch, minor, or major. And I'll talk about that in just a second. And then you can add a little bit of a, of a tag, like I'm creating a readme or something like that. And um, what version will do is it'll not only update your version number, but it'll also create a new commit if you have a, a GitHub repo. It'll create a new commit uh, with all of these updates, and it'll create a new git tag. So when you push up, make sure you remember to uh, git push uh, and git push dash dash tags. Um, but I don't have a GitHub repo for this project right now, so ignore that. But if I do an npm publish again, uh, now as soon as it publishes, I should be able to find that packet. Now there should be a readme. Ta-da! OK, fantastic. <laughs> OK, so let's say I totally didn't like this at all, and I really want, I just was not a fan. Uh, so I can unpublish. And I can just say unpublish. And uh, what npm unpublish tends to do is if you only have one little module, uh, if you only have one version, it'll go ahead and delete that one version. Uh, or it'll unpublish just one piece of, the, of, of it. But specifically, it's good to say explicitly what version you want to unpublish. So I can you know, npm unpublish. Uh, rack, rack, wombat facts at 1.0.0 because I really didn't like the fact that it didn't have a README. So cool, I can unpublish that. Or if I want to unpublish everything, I can unpublish with a dash F or a dash dash force, and that'll unpublish the entire package in its entirety. And uh, you know, I, we, we sure hope you know what you're doing when you do that. Uh, but then, as you will see, it's not found. It's totally gone. Um, now, one major thing that a lot of people try to do is they'll go, hey, wait a second. I, uh, I, want, to, I, I want to publish, a, I want to republish version 1.0.0. Well, let me tell you that is not a good idea. Um, and here's why. Let's talk about Semver for a second. Uh, Miles Borens is going to go a little bit more in detail about Semver, so I'm just going to do a really, really high-level version. But with Semver, Semver is semantic versioning. It is a, a handshake that you do with the rest of the developer community, at least within the NPM uh, land, where you basically say, I promise, I here do solemnly swear that uh, I am up to very good. Uh, <laughs> and what you're basically saying is, whatever this number is, when I make a change, I will update this number to reflect the type of change that I'm about to do. So the, the last digit is going to be your patch. And that's something that's like, OK, if I have some bug fixes or I forgot to add a readme, it doesn't actually affect the code that much. It's just going to be like this tiny, tiny thing. Now, um, and you can use npm version patch to, to bump that. And then if you have a, a, a minor, so if, if you change the middle number, that's because you've added some new features. Maybe you've extended your API, uh, or you've uh, you know, just kind of made something a little bit cooler. So that's a minor. That's NPM version minor. 
And then if you have a major breaking change, like you're deprecating a function, uh, you are completely rewriting how a function works, you're using modules that have also totally had massive breaking changes, then you're going to go ahead and bump that major, and that's npm version major. And so again, this is a handshake that you're making with the rest of the community. When somebody comes in to support and says, hey, I accidentally unpublished my version 1.0.0, and I don't want to create a new version 1.0.1. Can I just rewrite 1.0.0? No, you can't. And the reason for that is that you've now violated the handshake. That's kind of like giving somebody a present and saying, hi, I bought you a present. It's this really amazing cake, and it's chocolate and delicious. And then saying, oh, wait a second. I'm just going to take that back. Um, and, then, and then you kind of like give them like a vanilla cake instead. And it's like, a vanilla cake is good, but it's not the chocolate one that you gave me originally. Why? why what happened to my chocolate cake, right? And, and so the rest of the community is expecting you to uphold this. And here's the fun fact. Versions are cheap. They're completely free. They're completely free. So it's totally OK if you have to bump your version number by you know, a little patch of 0.0.1. Oh, oh, um, so cool. There's more. There's totally more. There's always more. Uh, but we don't have time for all of that, unfortunately. So here are a few things for you to totally look up. Uh, bundle dependencies, npm shrink wrap, their configuration options that will totally make your whole workflow a lot better. Dist tags and npm pack and npm deprecate and npm update. So many things. How will you ever learn about them all? <laughs> Go to docs.npmjs.com. It has every single bit of documentation that we currently have about all of our products, all of our services, all of those good things. And if you need help, that's totally fine. Come to our support page. There you can fill out a form to contact us, or you can just email us, or you can tweet at us, or you can even take a look at our issue tracker and create issue tracker, or create issues on our issue trackers for the command line interface, the website, or the registry. So come, like, come say hi. Please fill out bugs. We depend on you, uh, and we know how much you depend on us. So uh, go out, build some really, really cool stuff. Uh, come talk to me. I will give you stickers in exchange. And you know, chat with me on the Twitters and stuff, too. All right, thank you so much. <laughs>